Part 3 Background to Language Teaching Unit 15 to 17 Unit 15 Presentation Techniques and Introductory Activities Presentation techniques are ways used by the teacher to present, introduce to learners for the first time, new language such as vocabulary, grammatical structures and pronunciation. Introductory activities are those used by a teacher to introduce a lesson or teaching topic. Presentation, Practice and Production, PPP, Lesson AIM, students learn the difference between countable and uncountable nouns and when to use a and some with them. Procedure, 1. Ask students what food and drink they like at 1. Hold a discussion with the students about birthday parties. 2. Stick on the board magazine pictures of different party foods. They should be a mixture of countable and uncountable nouns. For example, ice cream, sandwiches, cola, fruit, bananas, chicken legs, cake, a box of sweets. 3. Ask students the names of the food items, write the names on the board under each picture and then do a quick quarrel drill on the pronunciation of these words. 4. Say to students, I'm having a birthday party this weekend. I'd like a box of sweets and a cake for my party. And I'd like some ice cream, some cola, and some fruit. I'd also like some sandwiches, some bananas, and some chicken legs. Task-based learning, TBL, lesson. AIM, students choose food and drinks for accountable and uncountable nouns, and when to birthday party. 1. Hold a discussion with the students about when their birthdays are, what presents they would like, what good birthday parties they have been to and what they like to eat and drink at birthday parties. 2. Put students into small groups and give them a worksheet with the pictures, names and prices of lots of party food and drink on it. 3. Tell the students to do this task. Choose the food and drink they would like for a birthday party, for 10 friends, keeping within a price limit e.g. $10. 4. The students do the task while the teacher goes round the class listening and answering any questions. 5. Each group tells the other groups what decisions they have made. Presentation, Practice and Production, PPP, Lesson 5 Say, I'd like a box of sweets, I'd like a cake, I'd like some ice cream, etc and ask students to repeat each sentence chorally. 6. Point out to the students that you can count some nouns, but you can't count others. These are called countable and uncountable nouns. You use it with singular countable nouns and some with uncountable nouns or plural countable nouns. 7. Ask the students some concept questions, for example, which of the food items on the board are countable slash uncountable slash singular slash plural? 8. Students do a written gap fill exercise, filling the gaps with a or some. 9. Students work in pairs with a worksheet of pictures of food and drink items. One student tells the other what they'd like for their party, e.g., I'd like some, slash a, while the other student takes notes. Then they swap roles. Task-based learning, TBL, Lesson 6. The students ask the teacher questions about any language they needed for the task and or the teacher tells the students about any language she noticed they didn't know while they were doing the task, fo example. The pronunciation of some food words, the grammar of uncountable and countable nouns. 7. Students do a written exercise on the new language. The introductory stage of a lesson helps students to settle into the lesson and focus on its content. There are two kinds of introductory activities, warmers and lead-ins. Warmers are often used to raise students' energy levels or to make them feel comfortable. Lead-ins focus on the topic or new language of the lesson. You can see that in a PPP lesson the teacher, 1, presents new language in a context 2. Gets students to practice it in controlled practice activities 3. Asks the students to use the new language in less controlled activities, in a communicative way. You can see that in a TBL lesson the teacher, one gives students tasks to do two presents new language after students have needed to use it, and only presents language that he she or the students have identified as needed. Unit 16 
practice activities and tasks for language and skills development. These are activities and tasks designed to give learners opportunities to practice and extend their use of language, such as new vocabulary, functional exponents, or grammatical structures. Or of the subskills of reading, listening, speaking, or writing. There are many different kinds of activities and tasks with different names and different uses. Activity 1. Reading for specific information type of activity. Listening for specific information. Type of activity. A multiple choice questions, an activity in which you choose the best answer from three or more possible answers, b true slash false questions, an activity in which you decide whether statements are correct or incorrect. Activity. 3. Reading for detail. Type of activity. Ordering. Activity. 4. Listening for specific information. Type of activity. Form filling. Activity. 5. Fluency in speaking slash free or practice of new language. Type of activity. Role play, an activity in which you imagine that you are someone else in a specific situation. Activity. 6. Accuracy in speaking slash controlled practice of new language. Type of activity. Survey, finding out the opinions of a group on one topic. Unit 17. Assessment types and tasks. What are assessment types and tasks? Assessment involves judging learners' performance through information collection. We use various assessment types, tests, and tasks, methods, for different purposes. Reasons for assessing learners, diagnostic test, beginning of a course, placement test, language school or evening classes, formative assessment, after teaching a part of a course, summative testing, end of a term or course, proficiency test, assessing language skills, self-assessment and peer assessment promote learner autonomy. Different assessment tasks, gap fill multiple choice questions true slash false questions ordering correcting mistakes interviews, conversations, Role plays writing letters or compositions dictation tasks can be categorized into communication skills, accuracy of language use, or testing specific knowledge. Objective versus subjective tests. Objective tests, right or wrong answers, e.g., multiple choice, gap fill. Subjective tests, judgment based marking, e.g., compositions, interviews. Portfolios. Portfolios, collections of learners' work, including self-slash-peer comments. Used for both formal and informal assessment. Informal assessment. Informal assessment methods, observing spoken or written work answers to comprehension tasks notes on learners' performance self-slash-peer assessment sheets common for assessing attitude and effort, especially with young learners and teenagers.